Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to be going over Banana Factory on Apocalypse. And yes, I did no lives lost this, and that was actually quite difficult. I did it on my first try, but I'd use quite a few road spikes and do a lot of random weird things I normally don't have to do. So yes, it was quite difficult. Um, the first thing I'm going to go over is the strategy, and then I'm going to talk about a few random things. Um, I think the main thing I'm going to talk about is some sort of science and I see some people look wanted to talk about science and some people wanted me to talk about myself and I figured this video I'll talk a little bit about science maybe something interesting for you guys so if you guys don't think this is interesting at all let me know and I'll try and change what I'm talking about anyways uh, the strategy I started off with a sniper and a dart monkey and I wanted to get attack factory as soon as possible but I ended up having to keep building other towers because I was about to loot I couldn't save up that $700 for the spike factory, so what I ended up having to do, I had to get an engineer, I had to get a 1-0 sniper, and an, the original dart monkey that I started with before I even could get a spike factory. So of course I got my farm late. I think I got my farm on level like 24, and there's really like no spots for farms on this level, so that really hurt me. This level was actually really difficult for Apocalypse. It wasn't like unbelievably difficult, because I obviously did no lives lost it, but uh, yeah, it was pretty difficult in general. Um, after I did that, I pretty much wanted to get quite a few farms, and then I just started making a couple towers that would actually give me some popping power. So I got my engineer up um, to 1-0, and then I got a couple more snipers. I think I got one extra sniper a little bit later after my wizard, and I got my wizard because I wanted to get rid of the lead balloons, just in case one random lead just goes right through your defense and then kills all your attacks at the end of the map. That's the worst thing that happened to you. That happens to me quite a bit when I'm not paying attention, and it totally sucks. Anyways, after that, I just built quite a few uh, plasma monkeys. And those plasma monkeys were a little bit doing a little bit of weird things. Um, if you notice that uh, in the beginning of the map, you might not have noticed, or at the beginning of the video, you might not have noticed that when the track moves, some of the towers don't actually shoot while it's moving. And some towers do, and I don't understand why whatsoever. Some towers do, some towers don't. Which do and which don't? Seems like most of the towers with really e easy targeting tend to just keep shooting no matter what, and some of the towers with the more advanced shooting, I guess, tend to not shoot. Like, it seemed like dart monkeys and engineers in this video, in Apocalypse mode, actually did shoot. But, in my previous video, in my Hard No Lives Lost video, uh, it seems like they actually didn't shoot during the movement. So it's a little bit confusing. I really don't understand it whatsoever. And then, once I got to level, like, 44, my Robo Plasmas, or my Plasma Monkeys, Super Monkey, didn't shoot while I was moving. And that almost killed me. It was very, very close to killing me. But I lived through it because I kept massing as many towers as I could, and I did alright. After I got like three plasmas, it didn't really matter if it moved, I was still doing really well. Anyways, I thought that was a little bit weird, I don't understand that at all, it was just kind of making me like angry about it, like why does it do that? I don't understand. Uh, anyways, uh, after that I just pretty much got a sun temple, a fully upgraded sun temple, and my sun temples are pretty sweet. Uh, they do so much damage. I'm on level like 77 right now. I recorded up to like like 73 or something, 75, maybe somewhere right around there. Um, obviously, I could go to level like 110 with just these two temples, let alone my $680,000 that I have. Uh, so that's really all I got for the strategy. Oh, and the sun temples, they shoot while it moves, so I don't understand. I don't understand it at all. And I said that quite a bit, but it just baffles me. Anyways, now I'm going to talk about something a little bit different, and let's talk about space. What are some cool things about space that you guys probably hadn't, haven't heard of? Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about the space elevator, and you guys probably haven't heard of that. Some people who are really into space might have heard of the space elevator, but I'm kind of interested in it. I actually did a couple of research projects on it. Anyways, uh, I'm just this is just going off the top of my head, so it's really just like make-believe just about... Um, First of all, what is a space elevator? A space elevator is a uh, basic, it's basically an elevator to space, but it's not an elevator that you think of where you like, you would ride in it and uh, be totally safe and all that. What you have to do is, there's a bunch of different designs and how they want to do it, but it's definitely not plausible right now. I mean, in maybe 20, 30 years, you could probably get a space elevator if you really had the economic ability to do so, but there is probably no economic ability to do so, and nobody really wants to that much. And the only reason they really, really want to is because right now it costs like $1,000 to put one pound, or not a 1000 I think it's, 
yeah, it costs like a thousand dollars to put one pound in space. So when they're usually sending up spaceships that are tons or hundreds of thousands of tons, you're talking a lot of money. You're talking millions upon millions, if not billions of dollars, just to put something in space. And uh, you can change it from a hundred dollar or a thousand dollars down to about a hundred dollars. So it's about one tenth the amount of money if you actually could build a space elevator. Uh, that's the reason you would want to do it. Um, the basic design of a space elevator is actually a giant kind of rope made of something that's super duper strong, something that we can't even really get right now. It's called ca carbon nanotubes, but it's just a super strong fibrous material made out of carbon, like the th same thing that makes diamonds and most of us, uh, and graphite, uh, something you write with your pencils. and. It's like a super strong banded material made out of called carbon nanotubes, and you'd have to build a base station down on Earth, and then you'd have to have that long tube of carbon nanotubes, something like 30,000 miles up into space, and then you'd have to have a, a counterweight up in space, and that counterweight would kind of act as like a lever, almost, I guess you could say, which would... Mm, it's kind of hard to explain exactly in like physics terms. I'm not going to go into it too deep, but it basically almost pulls on the carbon nanotubes up. So it's actually not pulling down anymore. It's actually pulling up on it because it is so long. And if you think about it, Earth is spinning. Uh, so uh, do we could a space is a space elevator possible? Yes, it is possible, but not now. Once we get the carbon nanotube technology. Uh, pretty much everything else is available, it's just not economically adv advantageous to do it right now. Uh, it costs way too much money, uh, we don't really want anything that much in space. What would we do, We'd pro if we actually did get that, we'd probably build a giant space station and or a moon station so we could eventually go to Mars. And that's something that we'd probably end up doing so we could colonize Mars, It'd be, we'd get a space elevator, build a giant base on the moon, and obviously the moon has a lot less gravity, so you could launch stuff off of the moon way easier than you can on Earth. And that would be the basic plan for having a space elevator. Um, also, I guess I'll talk about a little bit more stuff. Um, will we go to Mars soon? Somebody mentioned that in one of my comments. Do I personally think so? No. Uh, there's just some Mars rovers going around there right now, and they're finding a lot of cool, interesting stuff. Like, there definitely was water on Mars, and I think there's definitely was life on Mars? Do I think there is life on Mars? That's totally unknown. I'm not even really going to go there. I think there probably, probably is, but I can't be sure. And the only reason I think there is is because there's such crazy animals out there that can survive in such extreme conditions. And I'll talk about those in another video if you guys want me to. But they're called tardigrades, also water bears, and they can basically live in anything. Pretty much. They can live in space. Well, I shouldn't really say that. They can survive in space, and then once you bring them back to Earth, they'll be alive. So that's pretty much what they have to deal with. They can deal with this extreme radiation, extreme heat, extreme cold, everything like that. So life is crazy, and life is probably going to be somewhere where we don't even think it is. It lives under Antarctic ice. It lives in geysers that are over 100 degrees Celsius, boiling temperatures. So why can't they live on a place like Mars? If there's frozen water or some water on Mars, there's probably life. And that's pretty much my giant rant on a science thing. If you guys like this, uh, I'll keep talking about it. Anyways, I'm not gonna, I'll probably talk about myself in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Like this. Sorry, I cut off there. Let me finish. Like this if you want, and if you don't, tell me why you don't like it, and have a fantastic day.